SpaceX took another shot last hour at launching its super powerful Starship rocket. And for a few minutes at least, it looked like a successful blast off, but it wasn't. Take a look. About four minutes after taking off from the launch pad, something went wrong and the uncrewed rocket exploded. SpaceX workers cheered anyways and are still calling the test flight a success. Joining us now to discuss this more, the CBC science reporter Nicole Mortolero. She was watching that launch and Nicole, the explosion that followed. You know, it's funny because we were watching and everyone was applauding, but the pictures weren't really matching the reaction. What happened? What did we witness? Well, we saw a successful launch, right? That That's the main thing. And we knew that this was going to be, this is a test launch, and we knew that something could happen. Um, in fact, SpaceX had on their countdown at T minus zero, excitement guaranteed. So that is the reason why they were cheering because this was a test it got off the launch pad it didn't it didn't blow up at the launch pad thank goodness um, but that was the reason why the cheering it, it you know musk has always been about you know looking at explosions or perceived failures as successes because they get to learn from it okay so well, let's talk about the significance of this as you just touched on there why was this such an important launch and what happens next now well, now what happens is they go back to the drawing board. They have actually, if you look at the Boca Chica um, uh, site, they have many starships already lined up. So we're, they're going to go back to the drawing board. They're going to figure out why. And you could see actually when it was lifting off that some of the engines didn't ignite. So they're going to look at that. They're going to figure out why they had to destroy the rocket. Uh, and But you know what? It was a success. It, it launched. It didn't destroy the launch pad. <laughs> Uh, okay, and again, the significance of it, too. Well, yeah, this is going to be the, uh, the spaceship. And it's an iteration of the human landing system that will be used for Artemis III to put the astronauts on the moon. So this is a very critical test um, to figure out, you know, how this is going to work before you put humans on board, of course. A lot to continue to watch here. Thank you for breaking it down for us. Thanks. That is the CBC senior science reporter, Nicole Mortolero. And now for more on this, I want to bring in Tim Fernholtz in Oakland, California. He's a senior reporter for Quartz. He's also the author of Rocket Billionaires, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and the New Space Race. Tim, thanks for joining us. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. Okay, so you have been covering SpaceX since 2011. What went through your mind when you watched that launch and then that explosion after? Uh, well, it was the perfect SpaceX moment because it was the culmination of everything Elon Musk has been saying about the need to go to Mars to build bigger, more efficient, reusable rockets. We saw it clear the launch tower and then it blew up, which is another characteristic of all of SpaceX's great test programs. So it really was the full SpaceX show. So when we looked at the SpaceX Twitter feed, uh, the account tweeted, as if the flight test was not exciting enough, Starship experienced a rapid unscheduled disassembly before stage separation. So what happens now? What conversations do you think are happening behind closed doors, given what we just witnessed? Well, the engineers are trying to figure out what went wrong. Obviously, that was not the result that the folks at SpaceX had hoped for. But testing a brand new rocket is a very difficult process. They always, not always, but often go wrong. So they're going to be looking to see what happened with the engines on the booster. We saw from a, a picture that SpaceX shared looking up at the rocket booster that maybe five of the engines uh, either went out or failed to start. So they're going to be saying what happened there. Uh, and then we, we didn't see the booster separate from the Starship itself. So they're going to have to say, was there a problem with the mechanism that detaches the rocket? What, what happened there? So there are so many variables. This rocket is covered in sensors that are sending information back to computers. It's being recorded with all kinds of cameras. So now it's like a forensic investigation. What are we seeing and how can we correct it next time? And so to that point, we certainly saw here, uh, Elon Musk has tweeted, we learned a lot for the next 
test launch in a few months. I'm wondering, in terms of how common something like this is, of course, the positioning uh, from the SpaceX team was that this was a success. And, you know, we've heard from you and from our senior science reporter that in the point of the launch, there was a success there, but certainly it didn't go entirely as planned as we watched that explosion happen. So, so what can be learned from that going forward, and how common is an event like that when we are doing these sort of test launches or witnessing them? It's incredibly common. Um, in this new world of space business that we're in right now, we have seen a number of private companies try and launch rockets, and almost inevitably they fail on the first, second, even third launches. That was the case with SpaceX's first rocket, the Falcon 1. Uh, and if you even look at the Artemis moon rocket that we saw take off last year, there were four or five aborted launches before that thing got off the ground. To someone who is not familiar with the world of, of rocketry, it can be disappointing or it can seem like, I don't know, corporate euphemisms or, or cover-ups when people say, you know, this is actually a success in these various ways. But that's the way it is when you're building rockets. It's, it's not the same as anything else. And then with Starship, this is the most complex, largest, most powerful rocket that anyone has ever devised. Uh, so it's not a huge surprise that things went wrong. I honestly kind of expected it to blow up on the pad the minute the countdown hit zero. So that would be pretty surprising then to watch it, as you say, at least successfully make that launch. How significant is it that this is the, the biggest rocket ever built? Well, it's very significant for the vision that Elon Musk and other space advocates have of an economy in space in the future. The goal is to drive down the cost of going to space by making a large, reusable rocket that is very efficient so that you could do things like mine water on the moon, launch huge new satellites, uh, maybe manufacture stuff in space, have commercial private space stations, all of these things that these advocates want to see. What it, I think, really matters to most people and to the public in general is that NASA wants to use this vehicle to land astronauts on the moon uh, through the Artemis program that the Canadian Space Agency is also playing a huge role in. And so one thing that I am watching is how NASA is going to look at what SpaceX is doing and try and keep them on schedule because they would like to put people on the moon in 2026 or 2027, and that's the deadline that really matters for Starship and for sort of the public's interest in space exploration. And so this first test flight, we can say, all right, we learned something. But if a year from now, this vehicle hasn't gone into orbit, then people are going to start getting nervous and saying, OK, well, how are we going to put these astronauts on the moon? So I want to talk timetable for just a brief moment, finally, to end our conversation, you know, with a, a lunar destination as the ultimate goal. And we watched what happened here today with this uh, launch. Uh, I'm wondering, you know, Elon Musk now says the next space starship test launch in a few months. I heard you say, let's see a year from now. W what does the timeline look like, given what we saw today and given how much work needs to be put into applying the lessons learned? Sure. So when we're talking about Artemis, the next thing we're going to see is the Artemis 2 mission. It's going to send four astronauts, including one Canadian astronaut, on an orbit around the moon. And we should see that in 2024. After that, if all goes well, NASA would like to see an actual moon landing in 2026. And that's what the Starship will be used for. So before that happens, one, we need to see the Starship fly into orbit and come back and land, just so we know that it works. We're going to have to see that Starship has the life support equipment inside of it to keep those astronauts alive in space. And then we're going to have to see that the Starship can get refueled in orbit, because in order for the Starship to get to the moon, it has to be fueled up again in space. That's uh, not necessarily an easy maneuver, and it's something that they need to test. And then finally, NASA wants to see a uncrewed Starship do a test landing on the moon before they put any astronauts on it. So that's, you know, four or five major things that they have to demonstrate, and they have to do it by 2025 or 2026. So this is a first step, and they're not necessarily off schedule, but things are only going to get tighter from here. And perhaps this will be just one of many conversations with you over the next few months and years. Thanks for your time today, Tim. My pleasure. Tim Fernholds in Oakland, California. He's a senior reporter for Quartz and the author of Rocket Billionaires, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and the New Space Race.